8 a.m. So make sure, make sure you have your children here before 8 a.m. You notice how I worded that. Not at a.m. because 8 a.m. because the van is leaving at 8 a.m. Right? Yeah, ha, ha, yeah, yeah, yeah. All those cultural times, we ain't observing none of those. All right? <laughs> we, we observe in the time the Lord set into motion back when he created it. All right? <laughs> All right. Also, you will notice that as winter subsides, um, the church campus looks a little rough around the edges with trash and various things. So maybe some of you parents that may want to have your children learn how to serve in capacities that are like that and bring your kids here um, throughout the week just to pick up paper along the road and along the tree lines. Um, just let us know that you're coming to do it so that way we can give you a section so that we're not crossing each other up and everything. But it would just be helpful if we could get the campus kind of spruced up a little bit um, because winter just brings in all the junk and the garbage. And, and we got this beautiful landscaping done and it'd be a shame for it to be soiled by a bunch of trash. So if anybody wants to participate in that, just let me know or let Beth know and uh, we'll give you an, an assigned area to take care of. Also, Taste of the Nations is March the 20th. So make sure that you have that on your calendar. It will be at 7 p.m. And which two nations are going to be featured? Israel and who? Iran. Okay, Israel and Iran are going to be featured at these dinners. Um, there's a very strong Christian church in Iran, contrary to popular opinion. Um, also, uh, this coming Sunday night is our prayer at the square. Um, look, here, here's the thing. Dr. Norum has been talking and praying about recognizing our assignment for this city. And the reason that we pray on the square, it's kind of similar to when Jesus met the disciples at Caesarea Philippi. I'm, I'm going to tell this story quickly. But at Caesarea Philippi, they believe there is a place on the mountainside called the gates of hell where demons reside, where spiritual forces of wickedness reside. And that's why Jesus asked Peter this question at Caesarea Philippi. He said, who do you say that I am? And he said, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, flesh and blood hasn't revealed this to you, but my father. And he said, I tell you, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. And the disciples knew exactly what he was talking about. Spiritual forces, because he met them at what was perceived the enemy's gates. See, too many times we let the enemy get to the front door of our house or inside the sanctuary of our church, and then we try to fight, but he has the advantage there. See, he's already on our turf. So our goal in doing prayer on the square is to meet him at his headquarters and drive him back. Because we know that Satan uses governments. That's why it says the prince of Persia. That's why... Satan is called the king of Babylon, which is the world's evil system. So I believe there are spiritual forces at work in Elizabethtown. Now, I don't know that they're tied to a location. Just like I don't know that they were tied to Caesarea Philippi. Jesus was just trying to make a point. He was trying to show them that this is where it's perceived the most evil place in the world. And I'm here to tell you, it doesn't get past here. It's not going to make it to your church. It's not going to make it to your house. That is why we pray at the square. We pray at the square because we're letting the enemy know. As a matter of fact, um, the theme for that is taking it to the gates. So we're going on the enemy's territory and we're making a declaration that you don't go any further than this. You're not touching our families. You're not touching our church. You're not touching our homes. We're coming where you think you're in charge and we're taking over right here. Amen. That's why we do what we do. Uh, April 9th is our Messianic Passover. This is somewhat of a lengthy service, but it's well worth it because it comes with a dinner. So, if you're, yeah, right? If, you, if you're going to have church a long time, you might as well eat, right? Um, we have a worship service. We have a, we have a traditional Seder service. And Dr. Robinson cooks the meanest lamb on this side of heaven, by the way. Uh, I, I, think, I think the heaven's lamb might be a little bit better, but I believe you stole the recipe. So uh, 
Just come and enjoy the meaning and to see Christ in the Passover. It's such a beautiful experience. Um, usually there's flagging and there's, there's all sorts of things. It's just a beautiful experience. So. Also, we are collecting candy for Resurrection Sunday, which is racing up on us. We call it Resurrection Sunday just because Easter is from the, the goddess Ishtar, which is the goddess of fertility. We try to avoid that. We don't rebuke people for calling it Easter, but uh, I try to train myself to call it Resurrection Sunday, and it's on the right day this year. It's always exciting when it falls on the right day. And see, sometimes we'll have Passover, and Easter is not until a month later. And uh, it's because it's not, it's not Resurrection Sunday. So it's always beautiful when it happens at the right time of year. These are available online. Just go to About Us, and you'll see Church Bulletin. Um, and even before Pansy can hand them to you, you can have all the information. My wife posts them the day they're ready. So they are posted today. And you get all your information, put it in your calendar. I think now is the time for God's people to rise up and for God's people to be strong and for God's people to be devoted and faithful. And uh, man, I tell you, what we're doing is not easy. If it was easy, every church in America would be doing it. But what we're doing is worth it. It's worth it. So Father, right now, I thank you I thank you, God, that your presence is real and tangible among us right now. Lord, I thank you that even now I sense, I sense your joy in what we're trying to do, even in our own imperfect way, Lord. We, we can't know you fully. It's impossible. There's way too much of you. But we can know you enough to understand your nature and how you want to operate on this planet. We thank you for your word preserved throughout the centuries and millennia. We give you praise and honor and glory for what you're doing in our lives. And Lord, bless us as we take a few moments to worship you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Pastor, talk about long services. The last, I guess it was the Feast of Tabernacles. Is that what it was? Um, in the reading of that, which I guess comes from Scripture, I don't know, or just from tradition of what they did, it said that they would dance and sing all night long. So talk about long services. Maybe someday we'll get there. I'll need someone to help <laughs> with the music. We'll have to alternate. But God is good. Actually, I'll take that back. I wouldn't need anybody to alternate with. I feel like I could sing to him all night long. I feel like I could sing of his love forever. Because he's worthy, he's mighty, he's good. You're so gracious, Lord, you're so merciful. Sing of your love. 
sing of your love I could sing Yes, Lord I could sing all night Day after day, Lord I could sing of your love Forever I could sing of your love Forever We will win We will win For you fight with us We will
The younger people in here probably never heard that. <laughs> but he's mighty. He's wonderful. And he does fight with us. Sometimes he flat out fights for us. When we brought it on ourselves. Just like Pastor said, we lead the devil. Sometimes we lead him to our home. It's all our fault. But God is mighty and wonderful and will come and fight for us. In spite of us. God, we thank you so much. Our King, mighty in battle, we have no fear, for you fight with us. Our King, mighty in battle, we have no fear. For you fight with us. Sing it again. Our King, mighty in battle. We have no fear. For you fight with us. Our King, you're mighty in battle. We have no fear, for you fight with us, with boots of warriors and swords of the Spirit. We advance the gospel with boots of warriors and swords. help God we're not alone cause you go with us and you fight for us we're not alone we're not alone our King mighty in battle we have no fear, for you fight with us, our King. You're mighty in battle. We have no fear.
Yes, we will. With the help of our God, we will win every battle. With the help of our God, tearing down strongholds. All with the help of our God, tearing down strongholds. All with the help of our God. Tearing down strongholds, that's how we'll win, with the help of our God. Tearing down strongholds, yes, we're not alone, we're tearing down strongholds. With the help of our King, we're tearing down strongholds. Tearing down strongholds, all with the help of our God. Tearing down strongholds, we will win. We will win. We will win. For you fight with us. We will win. We will win. We will win. Yes, for he fights with us. We will win. We will win. We will win. For you fight with us. Accept defeat because he's on our side. He's on our side, fighting with us, fighting for us. He's on our side, he's on our side, fighting with us. for us Shambarada bada da sing karada da ko sandra bada da sing da Come on worship him with your prayer language Lift him up Hebrada da sing rada kana da shi ro mo da si Hallelujah dream and I was all distraught about it that's where this came from and I was just looking through my notes the other day and I stumbled I was like because because I kind of picked the dream apart and that's where that came from and if I remember when we were having the dream and up through the end of last year that's what God was saying mm-hmm. it wasn't just for me right he, he wanted to share that he want that was and he's still saying it if we'd have sang it then, we'd probably still be singing it now. But he's good, and we will win. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 says we're more than conquerors. Amen. It says if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. See, the thing is, me plus God equals certain victory. Victory. Amen? Amen. Me plus God equals certain victory. If 
God yes. before me, there is nothing that can stand against me. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And see, the beauty of that is that uh, Jesus said that we were his friends. Amen. And you know what a friend is. That's somebody that's on my side. Amen. The Bible says he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. Amen. In other words, Jesus is thicker than blood. Amen. Amen. They say blood is thicker than water. Well, Jesus is thicker than blood. Jesus. So I am just so thankful that our victory is certain. See, we, we've got to rearrange our thinking. Because, see, sometimes we have defeated thinking. We get whooped up by our thoughts before the devil gets a chance to do anything. We done beat ourselves to death. We're already staggered. That's all he does is goes boop. Yeah. And then we blame him. But I'm telling you, you fix your thinking, he won't have access. The Bible says do not give the devil a foothold. So that means it is possible for him not to have a foothold. Right? Hallelujah. That's just what the reason Jesus, which we're going to talk about tonight, in his Lord's Prayer, he said your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, Jesus doesn't tell you to pray tantalizing prayers Amen. to keep you on the edge of your seat and not give you any fulfillment you know those TV shows right the, the cliffhangers see Jesus doesn't do cliffhangers he gives you the end of the story first Yes. see your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven see he gives you the end result first and it says go after that so Father we thank you for an opportunity Lord I thank you for worship Lord I thank you for spirit inspired songs Lord I thank you that we can sing the songs of heaven Lord you're revealing your heart to this church in a real and a fresh way and Lord we love songs that are written hundreds of years ago from all the way to Redding California and Charlotte North Carolina even today but Lord we thank you that you're speaking and singing songs over Lakeside Addressing the assignment you've given this church. Help us, Lord, to flow in that assignment. Help us to see into the Spirit, Lord. Open the eyes of our hearts that we may see what is the glorious inheritance of your saints, or of you in the saints. Lord, what is the hope in our calling? Lord, help us to see ourselves seated with you in heavenly places, far above all rule, all dominion, all authority, all power. Satan has to look up and see me. See, if I'm looking Satan in the eye, I'm sitting in the wrong seat. We're going to give you an opportunity to worship God with your giving. It is such an incredible privilege to give. Uh, just to, to let you all know some financial situations of the church. This is a Wednesday night crowd. Um, our special projects fundraising uh, has fallen short of the goal to start the sidewalk. We are about $5,000 short just to begin that project, and then we don't know what we're going to get into at that point. We are also in process of installing a new air conditioner for this sanctuary, and uh, that's about $15,000. Now, here's the beauty, is we are very good stewards with the money, so we don't have to take an offering to cover that. And we have that in our savings, and we're just going to cover that. Um, Another thing is our missions budget has been falling about $300 short every month. If that continues, then we're going to have to reduce our missions budget, which will have a negative impact on missionaries. But I believe that we can increase that by $300 a month. Even if just a few people would give either $5 on top of what they're already given. Say so you give $10 a month, you could increase that to $15. Um, that's what my wife and I do. We give extra. And, uh, or maybe if you're not giving anything to missions, you can start with 5 bucks. Anybody can afford five bucks. That's two sodas a week, two and a half cups of coffee a week, depending on where you get it. But just be thinking about that. Just be thinking about some of the extra things this church does. Also, our food bank. Um, our food bank is, is having a hard time breaking even because of the need. Uh, if you ever want to give a little extra to the food bank, even if, look, even if, all week, you just save your dollar bills. You know, and you end up with like two or three extra dollar bills and drop that in on Sunday and just mark it food bank. You'd be amazed the difference just a few dollar bills would make. 
if everybody was to do that, let's just say everybody was to make a commitment to save $2 bills every week. Bring that to church. About 300 bucks. Boom. Every week. So, uh, you know, their, their account has dipped pretty low. We need to build that back up. So just be thinking about that. So just a few needs that I'm putting forward. We need to increase our missions budget to match our missionary needs. I don't want to cut any of those. Um, and also, if anybody has not given their special projects you want to start, even if it's just a little amount, just to help us out, then also be thinking about our food bank. And again, just a few dollars here and there. You, you would not believe the difference it would make. So we're going to give you an opportunity to worship God for giving. Elder Robinson looks like he's the only usher, so he's going to be working all these aisles. So would you bless the offering, sir? Amen. Now I'm about to tell you something that might be a surprise to you. Okay, but just just uh, just just try to take in this surprise with some with some sanity. All right, Jesus was Jewish. <laughs> okay, so that means that his prayers and his lifestyle and his thinking was like that of a Jewish person which would include the Lord's Prayer. So we are going to do a study on the Lord's Prayer over the next several weeks from a Jewish perspective, and we really hope that it blesses you. So we're going to start off with Dr. Robinson, my favorite teacher, um, has challenged me in more ways than I know. And uh, because of you and your angel talk, I found something out in the book of Revelation that I'd never seen before. I, I am working on my eighth translation um, of the Bible that I will have read all the way through. And uh, I just completed the NASB for the first time. And I caught, and the reason I like reading different translations is because I catch different details. And there are angels in Revelation. One is assigned to the fire, and there's another that's assigned to the water. And I picked up on that this time. I've read the Bible probably 15, 20 times all the way through. And I'd never caught that detail. And then I got to thinking about your teachings on the different angels and their assignments and different things. And I was like, wow, it's everywhere. So... If you look for it. So anyway, Dr. Robinson. Good evening, everyone. Turn me up, baby, so they can hear me better. Um, you know my Bible studies, huh? Thank you. <laughs> my Bible studies are a little bit different sometimes. And this is one of those nights, okay? So, we're going to be talking from Matthew first. And I need for you, you, to find the Lord's Prayer. It's in the book of Matthew. And if you like the other version better, it's also in the book of Luke. But find it. Now wait. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe one or two. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's close to the front. First, second, third, fourth, maybe fifth chapter, maybe six. All right, somebody found the sixth chapter. All right, now find the verse where it starts. Thank you, ma'am. All right. All right, now, I want someone to read the actual prayer that is there. Okay? It starts out with our part. Yes, then. Yes. All right, someone find it in Luke for me. 
I can help you there. Hmm. Either around chapter 8, 9, somewhere in there. 7, 8, 9, 10. That's as much as I'm going to give you. <clears throat> no, try it again. What does it say? Is it? Okay. <laughs> Is it? Does everybody agree with that? Chapter 11, huh? Everybody? Okay, someone read it from there. Okay. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Somebody, she's, she's chickening out on us. This stops right there, okay, in Luke. Now, when you look at your paper, you will see the Jewish version of the Lord's Prayer. This is where we get the so-called Lord's Prayer from. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy exalted name in the world, which thou did create according to thy will. May thy kingdom and thy lordship come speedily, and be acknowledged by all the world that thy name be praised in all eternity. May thy will be done in heaven and also on earth give tranquility of spirit to those that fear thee. Yet in all things do what seemeth good to thee. Let us enjoy the bread daily apportioned to us. Forgive us, our Father, for we have sinned. Forgive also all who have done us injury even as we also forgive all. For thine is the greatness and the power and the dominion, the victory and the majesty, yea, all in heaven and on earth. Thine is the kingdom, and thou art Lord of all beings forever. Amen. Amen. At that something? All right. Huh? It's taken, this is the Lord's Prayer, before... before even before Christ, okay? All right. The word kavanah is a term meaning to worship with the heart, and it is most times a fixed prayer, which is what we call the Lord's Prayer, a fixed prayer. And it's one that is recited daily at certain times of day. With the Jewish people, they pray normally three times a day, early morning, at midday, and evening. There's sometimes other prayers in between, depending on whether it's the Sabbath or other days. But in the long run, a lot of times we don't think of the mix or fixed prayer as having much meaning because we say it's just routine or we call it a ritual, which is not. It's not a ritual. But it is something that's very sacred and so beautiful, as you heard the words here. And what they're saying that it is a reminder for us to pray. Because sometimes we get up and we forget to pray in the morning. We get moving so fast. Our so-called spontaneous prayer was, Lord, I wish I had time to talk to you, but bless me anyway. Bye. You know, that's our morning prayer. But here in the Jewish fixed prayers, there's one that you must say every morning and you read it, the whole prayer. Now, I've got part of it in here, but I'm not, not going to put it all in here because it's long, okay? But it is a devotional. It is a time of quietness with the Lord, a time for you to communicate with him and not to forget to spend that time with him. There's a beautiful song that came out many years ago, and it's supposed to be, it tells a story of Jesus sitting on the side of the road and watching a person moving back and forth, constantly working, doing everything, but he's not spending time, and Jesus is trying to stop him and catch his attention and say, listen to me, listen to me, 
And eventually, he catches him by the hand and say, I miss my time with you, the time we used to spend together. That's what he says to him. And he admonishes him, please go back to that time because I miss my time with you. And that is what he's saying to us in a fixed prayer. He's waiting for us to get up in the morning. And if we don't have a prayer of our own, we could read a fixed prayer, one that is directed strictly at him. When the fixed prayer, there are no barriers. Um, there's no flesh in the way, no self whatsoever. There's nothing to block our concentration. So we do not pray to draw attention to ourselves, but we pray in silence. And we focus on the silence that's around us because it's like a, a blanket, a warm blanket that the Lord will put around us. And sometimes we can pray for that warmth to be around not only us, but our loved ones as well. I pray constantly for my son and his family and for the kids and the girls and the family to all be wrapped in this blanket of light to watch over them and that the Lord will keep, will keep them in his care because I don't want anything to happen to them. And I want them to always to be in his care and remind them that he's watching over them all the time. So what is, you say, but a lot of times I'm in a corporate session and I cannot pray in a corporate session in silence. Yes, you can. If you're truly fixed on the Lord, in his word, and what you're supposed to be saying with him, and in communication with him, nothing can enter that time. It's as if you and him are the only ones in the room. Fix, learn to focus on that. Fix your heart on the Lord. Now, the Jewish prayers are very sacred, and they're filled with meaning written to reach the highest level of heaven, the throne of God, as you can see from the Lord's Prayer. They are praise upon praise up to the Almighty, always giving him the honor and the glory, and they're done by people who know who he is. So you have to know that you know that you know the Lord before you can pray that kind of prayer. And that is a prayer that says, Lord, you are the only one. You are the honored one. You have all dominion over the whole world. Okay? These prayers also express joy. They bring joy to you. Because once you feel you prayed all the, the things, the burdens that you feel that you had on you before you said, Our Father, they're gone. You're free of it now. And these prayers also for the people who are in mourning. But see, their prayers, mourning prayers, are different. When they don't pray, Lord, my heart is so heavy, and I'm not going to, I'm going to get over this, and they died, and I don't know how I'm going to live without mama or without daddy or whatever, because your focus should be on the Lord. You ask him to strengthen you, then you start to rejoice that he's going to do just that. You rejoice over the fact that you had the time to spend with, with them while they were here on earth and what kind of impact they may have brought on your life and what they may have done for the world. Sometimes we don't understand what some people have done for the world because we don't see them except in one setting. And then you find out when they die that they did this for this person and this for that person they helped to build this and to build that. They've left their mark on society, on our lives, and we didn't even know it. So go ahead and thank God for what they have done. All right. Now, these prayers sometimes have headings, and the meanings of the prayers are called shaharit. And I'm not going to give a lot of Hebrew to you tonight, but you'll hear it. And this comes from the Hebrew word shahar, which means the dawn. So the morning prayer is called the shahar, or the shaharid, which means I'm praying in the morning, okay? This is the first prayer of the day, and this is what it sounds like. How godly are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel, 
As for me, through your abundant kindness, I will enter your house. I will prostrate myself toward your holy sanctuary in our view. Oh Lord, I love the house where you dwell and the place where your glory resides. I shall prostrate myself and bow. I shall kneel before the Lord, my maker. As for me, may my prayer to you, Lord, be at an opportune time, O oh God. In your abundant kindness, answer me with the truth of your salvation. Master of the universe, who reigned before any form was created, at the time when he will be brought all into being, then as king was his name proclaimed. After all has ceased to be, he, the awesome one, will reign alone. It is he who was, he who is, and who shall remain in splendor. He is one. There is no second to compare to him, to declare as his equal, without beginning, without conclusion. He is the power and dominion. He is my God, my living redeemer rock of my pain in times of distress. He is my banner, a refuge for me, the portion in my cup of my daily call. And it goes on from there, okay? This is another example of a fixed prayer. This is the one in the evening. And it flows from Psalm 9, 145, and it's called the Asherah. And it comes from the Hebrew word Asherah, meaning the alphabetical hymn, you will find some of the psalms that uh, each verse is based on the Hebrew alphabet, okay? From A to Tau, which is the last letter, okay? And this is part of it. Praiseworthy are those who dwell in your house. May they always praise you, Selah. Praiseworthy are the people whom this is so, Praiseworthy are the people whose God is the Lord. I will exalt you, my God and King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and lord your name forever and ever. The Lord is great and exceedingly lauded, and his greatness is beyond investigation. Each generation will praise your deeds to the next, and of your mighty deeds will tell. The splendorous glory of your power and your wondrous deeds I shall discuss. And of awesome power they will speak and your greatness I shall relate. And it goes on until it gets to the last letter of the alphabet. So all of the, these, these scriptures, all of these prayers are based on scripture. Not one word is made up. It's based on the word. They usually open with a passage from one of the Old Testament scriptures, such as uh, from the, the Torah or something like that, the first five books of the Bible. And then it goes into a psalm that goes with it. And so that's what you'll see here. The morning prayer is from Numbers 24 and 5, then Psalms 5, 8, 26 and 8, 95 and 6, 69 and 14. And the evening prayer is recited from Psalm 84 and 5. 144, 15, and 145. The Jewish prayer, what we call the Lord's Prayer, is like one of those. And Jesus shortened the prayer for a reason. He made it easier, first of all, for the disciples to understand. That's why they asked him, teach us to pray. And then they were supposed to teach the followers. He made it easier for us to understand because he knew that we'd be grafted into the vine eventually. And we would not understand the full prayer as it is. We do now because we know the word and we know the power of God. So we understand that. And it is an introduction into the faith. That's what this, scripture, this prayer is. And then we too now, once we learn it, we are supposed to teach others. We are now his disciples. Jesus had a set of disciples. They taught another group. We're the set of disciples. And all and so and so. Now let's clear up one matter here concerning this prayer. We love to call it the Lord's Prayer. All right? 
but he, he didn't need it because he already knew it. He wrote it. So it should be called a disciple's prayer, all right? Because that's who he wrote it for, for the benefit of the disciples. So if we are all disciples of Jesus, and he is our leader, he is our master, then he's the one training us to, to be well equipped to go out into the world and spread his word. Um, he removed a lot of the wording because there is a problem which we're going to get to in a minute. Um, it is supposed to be a stepping stone. A stepping stone. It is not a ritual. It's not one of those prayers where we teach the kids and hope they learn, figure out what it means later. Because a lot of times we don't know what it means. <laughs> Why would we expect them to know? And the reason is, is because we've seen it as a ritual and not what it says, what it's supposed to be in the word. So, these people had to learn to do something else. They had to learn to pray a prayer that they could pray in a hurry. Now, why do you say that? Because of the times that they were living in. They were living under Roman rule. And Roman rule said, we don't care about your God. We got so many of ours. What do we care about yours? They never knew if the Romans were going to come along and destroy them or tear down their, their, their temples or their synagogues, which is exactly what the Romans did, okay? And they may have to leave in there early, okay? See, we think today that we are so well covered and we're so well taken care of and we love our cushy life to the point that we don't understand that we are sitting on the edge it's like standing on the trying to stand on the head of a pin. It could go either way, any time. It was on my news thing that I get all the time about the, the churches in China where the government is blowing them up. And you could only keep your church open, listen to this, if you get rid of all the Christian symbols, if you get rid of the Ten Commandments that cannot be placed anywhere. They have put cameras in the church so they can watch the services and the services are being broadcast to the police station. You cannot mention Jesus' name and you cannot mention the name of God. Now, if your church has a, a permanent fixture of a cross on the wall, it can stay there. But the music even cannot be sung or even rejoiced over. And the reason is because the first song that has to be sung in the church on Sundays or whenever you have service is the national anthem, not the one to the country, but the one to the leader of the country. And from then, from there, all of the other songs have to be patriotic. But they said you're allowed to keep the church open. One pastor has disappeared because he refused to let them put the cameras in the church and he said, we will have church as usual. And they arrested him, placed him in custody. And then when the time came, they had a secret trial. And no one has heard from him since. He stood up for his congregation. But they blew up the church. OK? So it doesn't matter where we are right now. At one time, it was OK to have church in China. Then they had to go underground. And if they find out that there's an underground church, they will take all of the people who go there and kill them. Because you did not make the leader number one. So be careful when we sit back and think that we are taken care of, that we are so easy to be protected here in this country. It can change at any time, all right? We have to remember that they had people called Caesars, and the Caesars also thought of themselves to be gods. So, you know, you're not going to worship anybody over them. Um, but in the long run, they had to learn a prayer that they could worship and say in haste, and maybe you have to be run, run the on the on. So another reason for the shortened version of the prayers is this, because we have a language barrier. East and West 
do not mix. <laughs> okay? So what it means and what all the sentence means in the West, it may be different in the East. And we'll get to that. Also, I have to remember that most of the languages in the world, except for those languages where the barrier is broken, where um, uh, the letters are pronounced differently, most of them, the J is a Y sound. And the G, the, the G that we have, is a G, is a hard guttural sound. So sometimes when we hear the words, we say Jerusalem, they say, yes, Jerusalem. And you say, what? And they say, yes, Jerusalem. They're saying Jerusalem. So you have to learn to change the, the vowel sounds, change the sounds of the consonants and all of that. Then they also change some of them. There's the sentences are backwards. One of the hardest things of learning German is that you can know the words, but you got to put them in the right order. Because we would say, like I put an example on here, your dog came into my yard. But to a German, they would say, the dog, it came in my yard, it came. The sentence is completely backwards. <laughs> that's what it sounds like, Yoda. I think that's where they got that from, OK? <laughs> so you have to learn that we have to be, be, be careful. And when we're even trying to uh, communicate with people, learn to know how, what their the customs are. Their customs are different. And you can't go and tell and chastise people for their customs, OK? Learn what they are, and eventually be able to tell them the difference of why, we, we, why you do this, why we do that. And you'll see you do have a few things in common, but you just got to learn to talk to each other, all right? But the best thing to do is to praise God together. When you do that, then we all on one accord. It doesn't matter what part of the world you're in. They know the one true God. Now, you have an assignment. I asked Pastor to pass you out some paper here because what I want you to do tonight is to choose a psalm. And I want you to use it, maybe writing some of your favorite verses. You know what it is. You know what they are. And you are to fit three categories. First, absolute praise. Absolute praise. Respect in the creation of God. And then his glory. Remember, praise and glory are two different things. What is the glory? We give you the meeting sometimes. When we studied the club, well, none of you, I think, was here when we did Revelation. Except maybe one or two. What does the word glory mean? Does anybody know? Weight, heaviness. We are talking about the weight of the Lord his power, and so forth. So that's what I want you to do. Now, over the course of the week, write your own fixed prayer. You can start now by doing the research on it and based on the Psalms and other scriptures. Your second exercise is to choose any scripture or Psalm that speaks of mourning and how to rejoice in it. And the key word there is hope, okay? And if you have people in here who don't quite understand it, and you can go and help them, or you, they can come help you. So as you study the prayer over the week, next few weeks, we, this is the, the, the classes we're going to be doing, the Bible study. I would like for you to learn how intense prayer is, and it is in truth. And I want you to show in your prayers, learn how to be um, adoring of the Father. Learn that. Learn how to give him thanksgiving. Make sure it's not always about you. There's a time for petition, but most of the time it is about him. And always give him the glory back to him. He gives you a lot. Give it back to him in abundance. So let's start.
like, you're not quiet. You talk right now. Um, but uh, I had no idea that Jesus was breaking down a pre-existing prayer. And uh, you know how I always do when you shock me? What's, what do I do when you shock me? I go to Google. <laughs> I go to Google. Like she, she, Lord, she's telling the truth. How did I not know this? And I'm telling you, there's article upon article upon article of the Kaddish and several Jewish prayers that this is borrowed from. <laughs> this is just, it's just like tonight is like, um, that's just, just mind blowing to me. And if anybody else knew that, then, then you were ahead of me. Um, I had no idea that that was borrowed from a, from a Jewish prayer that was centuries, um, a potentially two centuries before Jesus was born in a manger. Now, of course, we know that Jesus ultimately wasn't, he was there um, the entire time. By the way, Jake, I found a Bible that has all the words that God spoke and read, Old and New Testament. Those things are awesome. So anyhow, just uh, take this time. I wrote several notes on, on several psalms. Um, my psalm of hope was Psalm 53, or 43 where it talks about being downcast and putting your hope in God and ascending to the holy hill and experiencing his exceeding joy. Um, but I am going to, d to dig into this because uh, that's just such a fascinating I don't know if y'all can tell how absolutely mind-blown I am right now, but it's just like, wow. Um, it's just really cool to have moments like this. To even, even, you know, the thing is, even though I'm a pastor and even though I work hard to study, there's always something more to learn. That's why the five-fold ministry is so valuable. Amen? It's just like every time Dr. Norum teaches and preaches, there's always this nugget that I'm like, I had no idea. And that's why we need each other. So when you don't utilize the gifts that God has given this church, you are missing out on some jewels and some, some beautiful things. Also, just uh, to kind of keep you all up to date on the Spanish-speaking ministry, they have officially launched. We did a couple of unofficial services up to this point, but they have officially launched. Their average attendance is about seven, so we're hoping to see that go up. They're going to put the sign up here soon. They've got an outreach on the 28th of this month. Um, be praying for that, that uh, it'll be fruitful, and uh, we're just really excited about what God is doing in this ministry, and we're just really praying that, that God will do a tremendous work. Also praying that God will send them a musician. Amen so that they can do live music. Right now, they're, they're playing CDs and singing along with them. So just bless them, be praying for them, and pray that God will use them in a supernatural way. And uh, pray that God will send them hurting people that can't speak English, that speak Spanish. Amen? And uh, just be, be praying for us as we uh, try to facilitate and help that ministry succeed. Um, it's basically a church all in and of itself um, with its own specific set of needs. So, Father, we thank you. Lord, I just, I just thank you for dropping bombs on me every now and then. It's just... Lord, I thank you that there are people that you have surrounded me with that are capable of, of, of teaching me things that I have no idea. Um, and Lord, I thank you that uh, you're so smart. I know that sounds silly, but Lord, you're, you're, you're such a genius in how you weaved everything together and how you left nothing to our imaginations, but you, you weaved this whole word together so that we can discover more and more and more of you. Lord, I thank you that, that although we can't know all of you because our minds just would explode, but Lord, we can know you enough to be able to make right decisions. Lord, we lift up Israel today. Um, we lift up specifically the city of Jerusalem. We lift up their government. And Lord, we lift up our government. Oh, Lord, help us. In Jesus' name, amen.